come back in the morning, the TV is busted and they're scrubbing off floors. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? Hi, my name is Nathan. I'm a former Subway employee. You might have seen my other Subway video where I talked about different rules I had followed at Subway, some really weird ones. But today I wanted to talk about what was like working on Subway. I'm like, no, that's kind of what I'm talking about with these videos. So today we're talking about some of the clients I had. Uh, I had some really weird ones and you're probably really intrigued by what the video is called, but we'll get into that. Uh, but first, if you really enjoy the video, leave a like, comment uh, if you have any subways that you want to say, if your employee wants to see something. I do want to make this kind of a series after Natober. Uh, maybe one video a month talking about Subway, so leave some talks down in the comments. And subscribe to the channel. These undaunted tales from the crib. Uh, but yeah, my, the guests we had, uh, to give context, the subway I worked at was in a pilot travel center, or I'm sorry, pilot flying J travel center. So I got a bunch of different people. Our main clients were obviously truckers. And then we had a uh, airfield base near us. Uh, so we had a lot of the military coming in, uh, you know, for and we usually got large groups of them. And then you got some of your local people, whatever. There was a Walmart on the street, so if they go to Walmart, there was also a subway in that Walmart, but that was like one of the worst subways in town and we were probably one of the better ones. So they always come to us, we were a little more accessible, bigger. Um, but we had some weird people. Um, obviously there's the one story I'm gonna tell at the end where a guy tried burning down my store. Um, we had a, we had someone escape from a mental asylum, uh, apparently. So what had happened was, this is, this is weird. I was cleaning the lobby and I had seen her walk in. Apparently she'd been before I got in there. And I'm cleaning and I see a bunch of red powder on the floor. And I'm like, that's really strange. Swoop it up. I'm like, uh, it doesn't, maybe it's like dirt. Cause like over the summer. So like there was a lot of construction going on and, and near that area. And like, they, I think they were at the time building the mire. Maybe the mire was already built. They're, they're doing construction around there. So I'm like, oh, just dirt, whatever. Swoop it up, go back to what I was doing. Make, go, like doing some stuff. And I was like, an hour and a half had passed. And I always check the lobby every like, two hours-ish, or if it looked dirty after a group of people, I'd clean it up. And I see more of this red dust, I'm like, that's really strange. And I'd seen some bags in the corner, they'd been there when this originally happened, the first time I cleaned up the dust. And I go over to the manager, that was uh, one of the managers was over there, uh, cause I was just by myself. Uh, my other corker hadn't come in yet. And I'm like, hey, we're gonna call her, we're gonna call her D. D, hey, there's a bunch of red dust, like I'm cleaning up, I don't know what's going on, it's really strange. And she, we, we're checking it out, and you know, I'm like, I was like, I was chalking up to, you know, uh, construction stuff, but like, the strange kid doesn't look like red dirt. It looked more like plastic, like red plastic. Uh, and she's like, it's from uh, whiskey bottles, like mini whiskey bottles. I'm like, how do you tell? Uh, she's like, well, look in the bag, she has a bunch of mini vials of Fireball. I'm like, what? I don't drink, so when it comes to a bunch of like alcohol, I don't know what she's talking about. We didn't serve alcohol there either in the truck stops. One of one thing we didn't carry. She's like, she has a bunch of mini fireball vials. Let me know if she does. If she's gets like strange. I was like, all right, cool. She keeps, and then this lady comes over. Maybe like 20 minutes later, I'm cleaning up front and everything. And she's like, hey, can I borrow your phone? And I'm like, I'm sorry, our phones are back in the lens back, and I had my cell phone with me. I did have it on me, but I don't give it out to people. Um, and they had just gotten rid of the one that was on the wall outside of the door uh, to our back area. It was like they had just gotten rid of it for some reason. They should have kept it. Uh, but I think if you need to use something, you can go ask some of the ladies at the desk over at the truck stop side. She leaves. Da -da 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 -da. My coworker comes and she asks my coworker, and I had already warned her. I'm like, hey, when you get behind her, she's been asking for a phone. Don't just ignore her. And you know, stuff happens, she leaves. And I'm like, alright, cool, whatever. Come the next day, I was like, and I was like, hey, whatever happened to that lady? Apparently, she escaped from a mental asylum. For, not from Indiana, no, from the neighboring state of Illinois. She had apparently escaped and had walked to the pilot, and she was supposedly waiting for someone to pick her up. Now, she was mentally unstable, so maybe she was thinking someone was gonna pick her up, or she was gonna 
think, oh, someone's gonna feel sorry for me, give me a ride. It was very strange. I don't know what happened to her after that. I know the police got involved at some point. Um, really don't remember. Um, trying to think what else I hate with doors, because like, with truckers, truckers get weird because it's just, truckers get weird because you have two different parts of the spectrum. You have uh, the very nice ones and you have the very rude, mean ones. A lot of them were pretty nice. There were some of our regulars, so I got used to knowing what they wanted. Uh, a couple of them would trash our lobby. There'd be meatballs on the floor and like breadcrumbs. It was disgusting. Uh, some of them were nice though. Um, the other type of clientele we got because of the truck stop was people selling drugs, people eliciting adult stuff. Um, we got hookers that are in there. Um, I'll talk more about this when I get to talk in my video, but talking about my coworkers. Um, one coworker was selling meth and bag for car on brakes. Um, i trying to think what else, because there really isn't much else to talk about. Guess why his glove were pretty tame. Oh, we did one guy that was high in weed. That was interesting. Uh, it, some of these stories, I come in after it happens, and I get to deal with the aftermath being the closing shift. Or not the closing, the mid shift, essentially. Because uh, the truck's up warm in 24 hours. Apparently what had happened is the guy had paid for his food and out of his wallet was weed roaches. And no, it's not bugs, but like whatever's left, what he would read smoking. And we're like, all right, we clean everything, sanitize, boom. Uh, and then apparently he tried shoplifting next door. He had been like taking shirts, stuffing them in the trash cans, stuffing them in the rat traps that were back. Like he ripped, like they were the big box ones. He'd rip those open, stuff them in there, whatever. Dude was strange. Uh, that's really all that happened. Oh, he did try eating stuff out of the, the hot case, like the hot sandwiches. And I had seen him do it. And I, I went to my coworker over there. I was like, hey, we're going to call her B. Being like, B, there's a B and D. Uh, uh, I'm like, hey, this guy, I just want to take out the hot case. I want to keep an eye on him. He's like, where? She's like, where is he? He was right behind, like, like behind her. Like, imagine... You, here's you he was behind her like I was like oh my goodness this guy like I don't think anything else happened I think he immediately uh, after that got arrested or he tried walking to the Walmart police had already probably been looking for him um, we, shoplifting was also a weird thing at that store because you technically can't prove they shoplift unless you saw it on camera though there was a guest we had over the summer it was very obvious that he was shoplifting uh, a guy came in white tank top shorts bulky green coat camo coat it was like 89 90 degrees dead of summer I was like, dude already looks suspicious comes on our side um on a bike comes inside walks over and uh, it's like all right whatever people are weird uh and then i go on my break and i see him shoplifting about manager i'm like hey there's a guy selling stuff in his coat and they're like yeah we know We've been watching him for like the last 10 minutes. Uh, we can't do anything until we uh, catch him on camera, which I found really dumb. But everyone sees him doing it. Uh, then he uh, tried leaving and got got away because a lot of people that were, that worked, some of them that worked there were older. Uh, so this manager who's in his 70s had both his heads replaced and was like, he, like he calling the radio and like, yeah, he's on a bike. He's about you know, 20 miles away. I'm like, Jay, guys, like. 10 feet, two, like he's like 15, 10 feet away. He's like, we can't really do anything, he's off our property. It's very strange. Um, the police did get a call, uh, the police did get called a couple times on the truckers because they wanted to stay, which is always a pain in the butt. I never actually had to go out there. Uh, there was a couple of occasions where I almost had to, being the only guy in the store sometimes, uh, when all the ladies were female. You know, I, gotta, I had to go out there which was kind of frustrating and pain in the butt, but I was the one on my side, I had other stuff to do. It was frustrating. Um, that's really... There's some stuff I'm probably forgetting. I worked there three years, haven't worked there for two. I feel like all the fun stuff happened while I wasn't there. But the one thing that I was almost there for is the title of the video where someone tried burning down my store. Now. For context, why did he do this? Well, this was during COVID. This was during the height of COVID. Um, 
we had closed our store down or we had lesser hours, we would close around midnight. And I had to stay, I had to stay till midnight or to like two, I had to stay till like 2 a.m. to help clean. It was frustrating, I hated it. So it was working like two to twos. It was abysmal. Uh, but there's two of us. I went home at 12, he stayed till two and we would switch. One night he would do it, one night I would do it. And I had seen him walking around, he was in the lobby. Um, we can't really tell him to leave the lobby. We can tell him we're like, hey, we can't serve him, we're closing. Um, and the barriers they had set up were just tables. There wasn't like anything really stopping him from getting into the lobby. Um, but he should have gotten a hint when the lights start coming off and everything. And I'm leaving, I get in my car and you know, I'm pulling out and I'm like, everything's fine. Come back in the morning, the TV is busted and they're scrubbing off the floors. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? Well, what had happened shortly after I had left is, and the, during when I was there, this all started going down. So maybe if I see a little too, I get to see all of this. He had uh, been eating out of the hot case, manager caught him, he's, he's like, hey, you gotta pay for that. It's like four bucks. The guy's like, I can have money. It's like, hey, it's okay, man. Um, next time you just gotta, you know, ask, or next time you can't be take stuff out of the case. Um, in like we had also put over like small mini subway sandwiches over there, uh, just for you know if they want a subway. There's like turkey ham, like the the cold stuff that'd be fine for a bit. Uh, and he'd be getting those as well apparently, and he got mad. And the manager was like, hey, we'll pay for it. We have enough change. We've got enough change. We're trying to throw a day. We're divvied up. Uh, so every night I would go home for, with a couple dollars. It's like not quite a tip, but it was like, you know, there's a drink for the night. Uh, and he got mad about it. So then he broke the hot case. He punched it. He did something. Uh, why he did this? I'll get to it shortly. But then he uh, stormed out into the woods behind the truck stop and we're like, all right, fine, whatever. Uh, you know, then my man the manager on shift went outside to follow him, make sure he left and grabbed his gun of his car, apparently. Some stuff, I was like, I'm not sure how true that is, of what happened. Uh, he did that. And then while he's doing that, apparently the guy circled back around, went back in his door, started breaking more stuff. He ripped the uh, paneling off of the soda machine, broke that soda machine on that side. Um, then he grabbed a weighted washer pole that are, that uh, the truckers use, uh, you know, to clean the windows. And he's swinging around, breaking stuff. He broke the ice cream uh, cooler. He he broke some other stuff too. Uh, then he grabbed some lighter fluid, which is first where he tried burning the place down. Uh, he he got not lighter fluid. He grabbed something that's automotive to try to bring the place down. It didn't light, whatever it was, didn't light. I'm really glad it didn't. Um, because you know, I don't know how many times I was like, you know, I'm gonna blow up today. I see old men with the giant cigars. Um, it, then he did that, then ran to the back. I don't know why, what took so long for the police to arrive. I don't know what they were, what they were doing, trying to call them. Um, but in this time, he had then got into the back storage area and had grabbed a box cutter that was hanging on a uh, rack and started cutting stuff open, ripping it up. And while he is doing all of this, apparently it took seven cops to finally get him down. And then I came in, I was like, oh, what's going on? Oh, and the, the TV, he apparently threw, the first thing he did after the sandwiches, threw a table at the TV. He, so he was on, definitely on something where he was able to throw a table at the TV. He was strong enough to do it. And I'm just like, what the heck's going on? This is freaking ridiculous, crazy lunatic. Apparently what had happened is he had been the, uh, the neighboring pilot, which wasn't that far away. And he got kicked out of there, the police dropped him off at ours. So apparently the thing they do is drop on the next truck stop, which happened to be ours. Um, dude, total lunatic. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite stories to tell, because everyone goes bug-eyed. When I tell it, there's no one else we sell besides, like, some of the regular guys we got, uh, the older guys, um, their, uh, their lottery ticket shavings are just ingrained in that table. Great guys, funny guys, sometimes they're jerks. Uh, but they're, they're our entertainment. Um, like that's really about it. Like, 
it, it, it's pretty boring in a truck stop sometimes of its subway. It was during COVID where it was like really slow. Um, oh, I did have someone, uh, I had furries come in one day, that was weird. Um, and the people were just in like druid cloaks, that was strange. Uh, but nothing really happened about that, nothing really happened with that. Um, I really feel like when I talk to my coworkers, we'd be very similar, I'd be like, yeah, they did this thing, yeah, they were weird, so this person was cool. Um, but what are some of your clientele stories? If you were a Subway employee, what are some of yours? Please let me know, leave a comment down in the, in the, in the comments, and where they're there. Uh, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel. I like to do more videos like this, so please give me ideas, I'm running out. I got like two more video ideas uh, for an Atober, or really one more for an Atober. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be like Subway, stay fresh. Have a good rest of your day. See you later, safe and peace. Like, comment, subscribe, and become a Nathan.